Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome to another early game playbook guide. Uh, today we're doing Dong Zhuo, the Tyrant. Uh, this is the only type of uh, start that we haven't done. We did coalition members, we did bandits, we did uh, the governors as well. So we're going to do Dong Zhuo today. Uh, he has quite an interesting start. Uh, he starts with a large territory and uh, he uh, sees the whole map because the Han Empire is his vassal. Um, another thing that's special about Dong Zhuo is that he is not unlocked at the beginning of the game. So if you're new to Total War Three Kingdoms and you start up your game and you don't see Dong Zhuo in your game, don't be afraid. All you need to do is play any faction you want, re reach the rank of King, and in your next game, uh, you will have Dong Zhuo available to select. Another way, a bit harder, is that you have to defeat Dong Zhuo in battle to unlock him. Uh, I say it's harder because Dong Zhuo often die in many of the gameplays, so unless you start with a faction like Ma Teng or Yuan Shu or Zheng Jiang who's super close to Dong Zhuo, you're not going to get the chance to kill him in battle. So that's enough about introduction of how to unlock this faction, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Dong Zhuo's faction and what makes it special. So the leader of our faction is the tyrant himself, the crew tyrant Dong Zhuo. His starting situation's label is hard. Uh, technically, I don't think the start is that hard. His uh, playstyle is a little bit unique, but you do start out with uh, a lot of advantages. Uh, he's a vanguard character, so he is good at destroying enemy troops. Uh, he specializes in cavalry. Uh, as a leader, he gives you minus one mustering turns, plus nine morale when attacking, uh, faction-wide bonus. You have a faction special resource called Intimidation. Uh, this resource goes from 0 points to 100 points. Uh, there's three tiers. From 0 to 30 is the first tier. There's a lot of penalties involved in this tier. And from 30 to 70 uh, is your middle tier. And in this tier, you uh, lose out on some... You, you, you don't lose out anything. You have a declay on the resource. Uh, the resource declays every turn, but you gain benefits like public order and anti-corruption measures because people are scared of you. And at 70 to 100, you gain greater bonuses uh, than your second tier. We'll talk about this once we go into game. Um, you have two unique units. You have the Sea Lion Cavalry and the Heavy Sea Lion Cavalry. These are just uh, upgraded version of your standard cavalry unit. They're Spear Cavalry or, or Shot Cavalry. Excellent charge damage, weak against missile attack. Uh, they're a little pricey to use in the beginning, but um, they are quite strong. Um, their faction unique building is a replacement building for the conscription building chain. This is quite similar to Cao Cao's replacement, except for I think it's not as good. Uh, you basically get extra rank, you get seasonal revenue um, deployment bonuses, public order bonuses, which is a key here. This building provides public order. This is something that normal conscription buildings can't provide. Uh, it also penalizes your population growth. Uh, we'll talk about how this might play into your faction uh, once we get in the game because we are going to feature this building a little bit. Uh, you have special faction mechanisms. You have Rays, which is the only mechanism given to Dong Zhuo. After you take a settlement, you have the option of raising the entire settlement. Basically burning it down to the ground to make it abandoned. Um, the benefit of this is that you gain Intimidation Point, which as we said earlier is a declaying resource. So this is one way you can gain it, uh, although the cost is a bit high. Um, for me personally, this is probably useful in the mid to late game when you are attacking other big factions that are already established. Because I tend to think in the base game, uh, a lot of the AI factions tend to over-level their settlements. If you've seen any of our commandery guide videos, you know that I personally don't like your settlement to be that high level. So using the option to raise to completely destroy a settlement uh, lets you have a fresh start and build the settlement exactly how you want to build it. Although the cost of that is you lose out on a lot of income and you have to spend a lot of turns to build things back up. But it's something that's worthwhile to consider. Another unique faction mechanism you have is Coheres. Uh, this is to use your intimidation points, 30 points at a time, to gain a large diplomatic points. So for example, you're trying to work out a deal with an enemy faction, or it doesn't have to be an enemy, but a, a different faction. You can use Coheres to give yourself a big boost of diplomatic points to force the deal through at the cost of 30 intimidation points, which as we said, goes from zero to 100, 
So 30 is quite a big investment, uh, but this could be helpful in a lot of situations. You do start out with some of the most powerful, noteworthy characters in the game. The man himself, warrior without equal Lü Bu, Zhang Liao, the heavenly dragon general, and Jia Xu, which is a new general who uh, got a portrait recently. Uh, beforehand, he was just a generic uh, strategist, but now he has a nice cool hat to go with him. Um, other than that, um, nothing else is pretty different. We'll jump into the game and take a look at the game map inside. Uh, once again, we're doing this guide on legendary, legendary, and 40 minute timers. Uh, obviously, this is just to show you guys how to start out on legendary. You can play on whatever difficulty you want. So let's hop into here. All right, guys, we loaded inside, uh, establish our power. Uh, Bailey says, strike back at the broken coalition around Yuan Shao and consolidate your power. Uh, first mission. This one's a little different from other factions. Usually you want to fight an army in front of you. This one's to take a settlement in front of you in Anding. Uh, we'll take a look at this later. The reward is public order, faction-wide plus three, uh, three turns plus five, uh, and 25 faction support. Uh, not really relevant. Um, so let's center the map and zoom out to see the situation. So as you can see, the whole map is very visible. All this red is Han Empire which is our vassal because we hold the emperor. Uh, if you don't know the story, Zhong Zhuo is called the tyrant because during uh, chaos, when the general He Jin and the 10 eunuchs uh, battled it out in the capital uh, in Luoyang, Dong Zhuo was uh, timely to arrive to uh, basically sort out the mess and take control of the situation, take control of the court and hold the emperor hostage. He even replaced the emperor. Uh, this current hostage emperor was not the emperor then. It's the, that emperor's younger brother. Dong Zhuo disposed that emperor and basically put the younger brother, who was much easier to control, in power. And then when the coalition came over to attack him, he just burned down the capital to the ground. I guess the game kind of reflects that by giving us the ability to raise. And then he moved the capital west to Chang'an because Dong Zhuo's uh, early childhood life was spent there in the Liang province over here. So it's closer to his base of power. Um, if we look at the map here, you start with quite a few territory. This light gray area is all yours. So unlike most factions that start with no land to maybe just two counties, you start out with, let's see, we can get a good count here. We have land within four different commanderies. Chang'an, we hold everything the commandery, both counties. Hanzhong, we only have the Silk Trader. Uh, we're missing the large town here, hold by Zhang Lu. And Anding, we only have the large town. Uh, the rest of the land, uh, one piece is held by um, a Han Empire vassal, one piece is our target, the tool maker, and another piece is unclaimed and abandoned. There's quite a few abandoned territories up here. And we also have a piece of Luoyang, the old capital. We might have burned down the Imperial City, but we're still holding on to the trade port. This trade port is going to be very vital uh, piece of land for us. I'll explain that a little bit later. And another thing that's really different uh, for this gameplay is that we have a very different rank uh, structure compared to other factions. We start out as the chancellor of the state. So as you can see here, we already been we already been given extra stats. Most other factions starts out as nobles and work their way up to second marquis, marquis, duke, and uh, king, and then emperor. In our case, uh, we start out at chancellor state. Seems like a low rank, but we get three assignment slot, two administrators, two trade routes, uh, one available spy position, uh, so a lot of different bonuses. And the next rank up is called grand master. Uh, a little bit extra stuff for everything. Uh, most importantly, plus 10 satisfaction. That's quite nice. And then we can become king. Now, when we become king, we don't become an emperor because that would be foolish because we're holding on to the emperor. What happens when we become king is that you will start seeing other warlords become emperors. And our job, like the governors, is to destroy these factions. And once we do, we win and become the emperor then, which is still kind of a little weird, but that's how the game works. Um, if we look at the map, we have two armies already on the map. We have Lü Bu and Zhang Liao, our two best generals uh, in an army group up north. 
They're the group tasked with taking on our first mission of grabbing the Toolmaker and Undine away from the Yellow Turbans. And we have this other army here, uh, led by Niu Fu, uh, Li, Ju, Li Jue, and uh, Guo Si, I believe. Yeah, Guo Si. So these two generals are going to lead a civil war much later on in history, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. And then if you look, we have a huge roster of people at court as well. We have Dong Zhuo, we have our wife, Dong Pei Shan. I think a better way to look at this is if we go to the court scene. So because of our higher rank, uh, we actually get uh, three uh, council positions and uh, Lu Bu is holding on to the grand uh, commandant right now. Uh, this is the only way to keep him happy. Because, as you know, Lu Bu will become uh, rebellious if he doesn't get one of these positions. Uh, he has a very high desire for higher office. Uh, everyone in this position will be satisfied up to level 8. Everyone in this position will be satisfied to level 4. Everyone in this row is satisfied to all the way to level 10. Max level, you'll never have desire of office problems. Lu Bu here starts out level 7. Super high level. So that's why he starts out in this position. But as you know... Uh, in many of my playthroughs, I don't give people these posts because it costs a lot of money to their salary. Plus 250 to be a counselor, right? That's a lot of gold. And the benefit is only 15% um, peasantry. In the beginning game, you don't have that big of a base of peasantry to take advantage of that. And Liu Bu's position here as the grant commandant gives you minus 10% recruitment costs, which doesn't you know, satisfy the 250 gold per turn that he's costing us. So we're going to do something about this later. Uh, as you can see, our huge roster of characters. Uh, many of these are family. Uh, Dong Pei Shan, as we said, is our wife. Uh, Dong Min is our younger brother. He's currently the heir. Uh, we also have our daughter, Dong Li, and our adopted son, Liu Bu. So the story of Liu Bu is that he, had, he was working uh, under a different general uh, called Ding Yuan. And uh, we really wanted Liu Bu to join us, so we give him a lot of gifts. And he killed Ding Yuan for us and uh, became our adopted son. So um, we have him now. <laughs> He's part of the family. And if you look at the roster down here, we already talked about Zhang Liao, we already talked about uh, Li Jue, Guo Si, and uh, Niu Fu. Uh, within our court, we have Jia Xu, who recently got his portrait. He's known as the Blade in the Dark. And here's something I have to complain to the developers. These four characters of Huang Gai, Pang Tong, Jia Xu, and um, who else got a portrait? Uh, Guo Jia. Yeah, these four characters got portraits, but they didn't get stat boost. Right? Legendary characters with their own unique portraits should have 60 points of stat, at least. Right? If you look at Lu Bu, Warrior Without Equal, he gets 80 points of stat. Right? 40 expertise, 15 resolve, 25 instinct that's a massive boost that's what makes these characters so special don't draw get 60 60 is the minimum of characters who get um, a special portrait if you look at a generic character they get 15 characters with a unique name but uh, has generic portrait in the past have gotten 30 so i feel like if you give these four characters um the portraits you should give them the stats as well so a little complaint here and Li Ru, also, you can see he, he's named Vicious Shadow. He's also a semi-unique character, doesn't have his own portrait, but has his unique title, 30 points. So in this case, Li Ru and Jia Xu is not that much different except for portrait, which makes him so much cooler because he has a much bigger hat. Um, enough about that. So what are we going to do in our early game? Uh, that's what we discuss in these guides. First, we look at our items, of course, and... Uh, we got gotten a lot of different horses and a dog. Uh, this one's obviously nice. So we want to equip everything onto this army because this army is going to be doing most of the fighting, at least in the first turn. Lu Bu starts out with the red hair, Sky Piercer, very, very strong. Very, very strong. He's just game-breakingly strong. Uh, they tried to nerf him, but they quickly decided to not nerf him because then it wouldn't be fun. You know, we have him to have fun. Alright, Zhang Liao, pretty bad weapon, but at least it's not generic. Uh, but sadly, even though he's a sentinel, uh, his weapon choice is a little bit limited in the beginning, so we have to give him this military jie. And uh, we can give him this horse since his expertise. There's no followers. The default item that Dong Zhuo's faction start out with is the Iron Archers. 6 satisfaction, 6 expertise point, 
perfect for a sentinel like Zhang Liao. Li Bu will get the stone horse, which gives an instinct stack. Pretty perfect here. This wooden dog, we're going to hold on for a little bit. We might use him as a bargaining chip in uh, diplomacy. So before we fight, this is when we have maximum amount of military presence. So this is the best time for us to do uh, negotiations in diplomacy. So because we can see everyone, we can negotiate with everyone. But unfortunately, most people hate us because we're the tyrant that grabbed the emperor. So there's a huge coalition against us. So almost every single character that you can play in the game hates us. Except for Liu Biao. Liu Biao is fine with us, but look at the attitude. Not that happy with us. Liu Biao, his two uh, vassals obviously are okay with us as well. Ma Teng, our neighbor to the west, is happy with us. As well as his ally, Han Sui. And let's see who else is happy with us. I think that might be it. Uh, some small factions like uh, Gao Gan, Gong Sun Du. Yeah, so... Uh, we have to deal with these small factions, try to work out a trade agreement with some of them. But most of the big factions on the map absolutely hate us. So let's see who's willing to do a trade deal with us. So we have three trade slots because of our different rank. But because we are the cruel uh, tyrant, we start out with 39, negative 39 points of treachery. So most people is going to give us a big negative attitude. Uh, but who can we trust here? Uh, we want to deal with, uh, I prefer to deal with people who are far away from us because that way we don't have to fight them and we can secure the trade deal for a long time. For example, Jia Long over here. Let's check out how many points. Negative five. That's too high. There's going to be people who are much better off. Uh, my experience is Liu Yao is usually around 1.9. Um, perfect. Now these numbers do change uh, from game to game sometimes. I've tested this out. I don't know why. But that's the case. Oh, wrong click. We are going to offer him per turn money. And because he's quite poor as a faction, we actually don't have to pay him that much. Uh, let's see. Maybe 82? Nope. Uh, let's go with a little bit higher. Mm. There we go. 84. Okay, so 84 gold for 369 gold per turn trade value. So this is definitely a great deal for us because uh, after 10 turns, this goes away and, you know, trade gold's always good. Alright, so one trade deal down. Let's look for another one. Uh, we can check Shi Hui. He's way down here in Jiaozhou, way down in the south. 5.4. Too much, too much. So the one guarantee you always have that's always low is Han Sui. He's usually around 0. 0.6. There we go. So we just give him a little bit of gold. Uh, very little bit, actually. Let's see. Maybe even 24, 25. I'm trying to be real cheap here, I guess. Okay, 26 it is. All right. And that secures us a 336 gold deal. And the one that I'm always hesitant on is the High Empire. Um, technically, it's not a bad idea to deal with them because they are a vassal. So even if you give them gold per turn, uh, what happens is that they will pay you some portion of that back. Because the deal with um, vassals is that they have to pay you 20% of their income. So you're going to get 20% discount on this value. Um, you could try to see if they have any good ancillary items that you might want to trade for. Um, this is not terrible, but I don't think we need that. Uh, you could offer him an ancillary item, but as you can see, even 1.2 here is going to cost you a lot because the High Empire has a huge treasury. Uh, so income to them is not a big deal because they make a lot, so they're going to demand a lot, if that makes sense. So this is not a great deal, right? Uh, even though you're making some back, it just doesn't feel right. So let's take a look um, at maybe some of the other options we have. Zhang Lu, uh, maybe he will do a deal with us. 0.8, okay, much doable. Um, you can still do a deal with the High Empire. Just use food a little bit later on once you get another trade deal. Um, the reasoning for that is food are always given a certain set base value that's going to be high. So even if you, um, so this one works out. Alright, three trade deal done. Uh, you're not going to be able to make peace with any meaningful faction. Like even if you pay these people to 
trade a uh, peace deal with you like why would we want to peace out with them they're so far away they're not really going to bother us and um it's just going to cost us a lot because our treasury starts out so high uh, so we can exit this screen as i was saying uh, later on once we pick a reform to get a new trade route whenever you decide to do that what you can do is to offer food right now you don't have any but eventually we'll have a nice surplus even one food can get you around uh, 1 point to 1.5 and you can also give over items like we didn't do here now uh, we could have given him uh, the, the wooden dog the wooden dog will always be worth 2.0 to ai no matter how much he hates you so that can sometime uh, get you through for that trade deal so in our gameplay now since we did all our deal we can lose men uh, we can fight this fight i have fought this fight many many times testing it out uh, using just the generals, using the troops and generals. Um, but the idea, I think the most efficient way is just to delegate this fight because we're not keeping this army afterward. Uh, so we can lose men where did our deal. So let's just delegate. You can absolutely take Lu Bu in there and go ham and wreck this army with no issues and not lose a single man. Uh, after a battle, you get 10 points of intimidation. This is very important. This is a big source of intimidation, fighting battles. And then you see here, we have this extra option of raising the entire settlement to get a intimidation point. You kill off all the people. This is really not recommended in the beginning because you get income from these settlements. So we're still going to occupy. And then we get this mission complete. Uh, it's quite nice. And our second mission is the Your Economy Grow, the famous Your Economy Grows, the one that we talk about in all our guides. Uh, not super relevant for Dong Zhuo, but still useful. Alright, so we took this land. You can see most of these guys are injured, and that's fine. Um, now we're going to be assigning administrators. So if we take a look at our two uh, commanderies that we have control of the city, we have Anding City and we have Changsha, Chang, uh, Chang'an City. We don't have Hanzhong City, we don't have Luoyang City, so we're going to be assigning our two administrator slots to these cities to help them grow and to build cheaply. Now the commander we're going to focus on is Chang'an, our capital, um, because we have a jade mine in Chang'an. If you're not familiar with jade mines, jade mines are uh, commerce and industry mixed uh, mining county that gives you very very high income a uh, perfect settlement to build uh, commerce and industry template guides if you want to check out our channel for those uh, but right now in the game they give you a default garrison building which it's nice for public order but has an upkeep cost and we don't really need to defend this city with this garrison it gives us one extra unit of garrison troops it also gives us trebuchets on the wall but we can defend with our own men so eventually we're going to get rid of this and we're going to turn this entire city to uh, industry and uh, commerce city uh, so these food farms are going to go away as well uh, right now they're great because we don't have any surplus food so they're just enough to get us through with our large town and city the city is the only one consuming food it's consuming six food per turn and uh, it only produces four that's why it says negative two and uh, over here this produces two from the land development building here so together it's six evens out zero we want to build ourselves a nice little surplus because we're going to try to expand so in Chang'an we need a administrator the perfect man for the job is Zhang Liao. Take a look here. Because of his high expertise stat, you get a 29% discount on all buildings. You get plus one population growth. This is from his resolve stat. 40%, 15% are very standard. They're the from the skill tree of any sentinel. Uh, just happens he has those skills ready on lock, which makes him perfect for this future commerce and industry commandery. So Zhang Liao is going in for the job in our main build site. And for Andi, if we take a look here, it's a large town. It has future, it will have three commanderies. Uh, this is also a low fertility commandery. Most of the land here, if you look closely at the map, deserts. So low fertility makes sense. But low fertility in the game only penalizes peasantry income. Doesn't penalize food production that hard. So if we've seen our peasantry template guide, uh, we talked about these commanderies best to just be food production. So we're not really going to worry much about 
income on these towns. We're not going to level up the settlement. We're just going to be focused on uh, building uh, land development and building uh, government support and just pump out food here. And it's perfect because it also has a farmland and a livestock farm. So that's the direction we're going here. So we need a peasantry capable um, administrator. And the perfect man for that job is Guo Si. Uh, he is, uh, uh, what are these? These are champions. Yeah, green one are champions. They're excellent at uh, population growth. They have a stat, uh, they have a skill that unlocks 20% income from peasantry, which he already has. And he has a trait that gives you 5% income from all sources. He doesn't have very high uh, expertise stats, so there's not going to be much discount in building. But the good news is we're not really going to be building many things here, so it's going to be fine. So we're going to put Guo Si into this job. He penalizes mustering turns, but all we have to do is not uh, recruit new troops in this commandery, and that's not really a penalty for us at all. So let's put him in here. So we have our two administrators down. We have our trade routes down. Now we'll have to do our assignments. So in Anding, this is our peasantry town. So we want to boost peasantry income, of course. So the girl for the job is our wife. Uh, we're going to put her in here. She's a, a commander. So they have this uh, tax collection buff for peasantry income. As you can see, all we have here are peasantry income. Uh, we have industry in terms of a county that we just acquired. It's level 2, 200 income per turn. What a shame if we had raised it, right? 200 income per turn is huge. So let's assign her here. And we can also assign this guy right here. He's our other um, champion. All champions have agriculture exploitation. So he will be boosting our food production here because we're trying to uh, focus on food production right now. We're trying to destroy those buildings here and he can provide four food here which will even out the needs here so let's do this as well and in our capital city in our last assignment slot we have the ability to boost our um, commerce income a little bit more right we have a little bit of commerce income right now from this building but we're going to be building more so right now we're going to just assign uh, we can either assign Li Ruo or Jia Xu but since Jashu doesn't get along with John out, we're just going to send Li Ruo, Li Ruo in here. All right, so assignment's done. Uh, first battle's done. Trade agreement's done. Uh, administrator's done. Now we go to our typical destroy our units. Uh, if you've seen any of our guides, uh, you know I disband unit really, really quickly in the beginning. Because they just cost you money. And uh, you could do a lot more with this money in the beginning if you just recall them. And we're going to recall these guys because there's not much for them to do here. Um, let me just make sure this real quick. Actually, we're going to disband. We're going to we're gonna not disband. We're going to recall only uh, one of them. We're only going to recall Zhang Liao because he's injured. So uh, it heals him, basically. Lu Bu is still very healthy. We're going to keep him because he's really close to Anding. We're going to have him run over here and claim this land it'll cost us four thousand gold but it'll be worth it uh he'll be claiming this land right here this army right here these generals are really not that great uh we kind of did this in our last Zhang Yan guide where we cleaned house in the beginning we're going to kind of do the same all right we have so much dead weight on our roster even though we have so many assignment slots and so many administrator slots, but we already got that all sorted out. So now these two vanguards are really dead weights because we have so many good vanguards. We have Li Bu, we have Dong Zhuo. We don't need these two guys. So we don't need to delete their units because we're going to just get rid of these generals in uh, uh, right away. Uh, Guo Si over here, uh, we're going to use for something else. So we're going to get rid of his units. He's also currently our administrator, so we can't dismiss him. So we're going to just pull him back. And then for these guys we don't want, we just go into our court. Niu Fu, uh, say goodbye, release from service. Uh, in history, just before we lose him, he is our son-in-law. Um, you think our daughter is really young? Well, I think the game made her that way. Uh, in reality, Dong Zhuo's daughter is much older and he is uh, her uh, son-in-law, basically. Uh, but say goodbye to him. Uh, Li Zhue, also an uh, excellent general for us, not useful, uh, release from service. Uh, before we do that, you can see here we have a very strange option that's not seen for any other factions. 
This is called execute. So instead of banish, other factions just let their generals go. Dongzhuo has the option of just killing their own general. It adds 10 points intimidation, uh, which is a great resource for you to use. You get some money, but minus 10 points of satisfaction. Very big penalty here. Um, we're not going to be this desperate for intimidation right now. We have very we have plenty of intimidation points, so we're just going to be releasing them from service. And then another general we're going to release right now is our brother Domin. Now let me go over this before we do this. The reason why we're saying goodbye to our brother is right now a he is our faction heir. We need this slot open because on turn two, you can make Lü Bu your heir. Lü Bu has much better bonuses, 15% melee damage for all shock cavalries, plus 3 morale enemy territory, and more importantly, he has so many skills unlock. He has flexibility, so minus 25% redeployment costs, and um, you get plus 5 points of faction support. Basically, much more useful as an heir than Domin, your brother, and also it will make him never have to have desire for higher office until level 10, so he will always be satisfied with you. So that's the game plan. And also, you don't have to pay him the salary to be your grand commandant. The heir is a free position. And our brother has many faults too. Uh, you think he's an officer, plus 6 morale, pretty decent. But he happened to be a beautiful brother. So while he is personally satisfied by 5 points, when he's your faction heir, prime minister, or leader, he gives minus 5 satisfaction to everyone else because of his beauty. Uh, which doesn't make sense, but that's the case. That's why everyone's kind of hating you in the beginning. Uh, he doesn't bring much. He minus 5% construction cost. This is nice. This is something we're going to abuse before we end turn. <laughs> because we can still build cheaply this turn because he exists. Um, but even then, now I think about it, it doesn't really matter. Because we're, what we're building is the tax collection building, <laughs> which costs zero. Uh, we're not going to touch any other structures because uh, we have a plan going forward. So we can just get rid of him now. So because all these factors, uh, we're just going to release him from our service. And if you look at this family tree, it's super sad. He says he has defected from our faction. Just still alive, but gone. Um, all right, so we're done here. Uh, before we end turn, we decided to build the tax collection building. Let me explain. Uh, the reason is, this is still peasantry income, and we said we're not going to do peasantry income. We're not doing peasantry income. We're doing uh, industry and commerce. But if you read here, it gives you 10% decrease in economic building construction. That's discount to the purple buildings. And we're going to build those next in this slot. We're demolishing buildings one at a time and building buildings one at a time to always have an open slot to build the buildings we want. And the buildings we want will be a state workshop followed by a private workshop, then an inn. And in the last slot, we're gonna be building an enforced conscription building uh, to make Chang'an temporarily in the beginning, our hub for recruiting new troops. Um, because of this, the best thing to build in this slot in turn one is the tax collection building. Uh, you build it in one turn, it gives you free income uh, you have enough public order in the beginning to tide you through, and you get a discount when you build the state workshop and the private workshop. And we're building these first because these buildings gives you 10% discount to learning buildings. So the inn coming in third gets an extra 20% discount because of these two buildings. We talked about all this in our commander build guides. Uh, it's very uh, min-max type of thing, so just stick with it. If you don't, if you don't care for that stuff and just want to build your state workshop here, that's fine too. And these buildings take one turn uh, because A, they're quick, and B, because we're Dong Zhuo, we start out with slave mobilization, which is amazing, amazing reform to start out with. Every building is one turn less. For someone who likes to build commanders, this is so great. All right, this is amazing. Uh, usually you need to level three labor building to unlock this reform, so you tend to never get it, but for Dong Zhuo, you get it right away. Uh, so everything is quicker to build. And with that building all set up, uh, over here, what we're going to do is demolish this level 2 tax building. Uh, even though we love tax buildings, uh, we're going to just be focusing on food production here. So we, we need a slot 
for a government support. So we're going to demolish this building as well for that slot. And that's it. That's uh, turn one of Don't Draw done. Uh, we're going to be continue playing. Don't worry. We're going to play quite a bit. So let's continue. All right. So we're starting turn two. We finish the building and we get this three turns of 20% discount and one minus one construction time, which is great for us. So we're going to be building most of our buildings here. If you take a look, because we took out our armies, our economy is booming. And it's going to boom much more uh, once we uh, switch Lu Bu to our air. Um, our next mission is to uh, recruit two more units. Right now we only have one unit, Lu Bu, on the map. Uh, we're not going to really worry about this uh, that much right now. So Lu Bu over here, since he has, uh, you know, since he was healthy and on the map, we left him out here so he can claim these land for us. Uh, empty commanderies cost 4,000 gold uh, counties. Cities cost 8,000. If you want to integrate your vassal's land, this is a benefit of holding the emperor. You can uh, take over your vassal's land. Uh, the cost is 5,000, I believe. It's a bit higher than empty land. Uh, don't know why, but that's the case. Uh, but we're not going to take these two land. Um, we're going to take this turn, which nothing is happening other than Lubu moving us building buildings to talk about um, what our plan is going forward. So here we're building government support. Over here we're going to start building the state workshop. And we're going to bust down the, um, the government support. Next turn when this is built, private workshop goes in right here. And then we're going to tear, tear this down to build the inn. And pretty straightforward here. And other buildings we're also going to upgrade. We have a silk trader here. We're going to upgrade. We have a trade poor upgrade. Because we have the discount, you know, why not? Um, we still have tons of gold. And over here, uh, right now, oh, let's talk about these bonuses in detail. This is our bar, 0 to 100. Right now it's 91. Last turn we ended at 95. Uh, we start the game at 85. The first tier break is at 70. So you do start out with quite a bit to play around with. You lose 4 per turn in the third tier. You get 8 public water benefits faction wide, which is great because Don't Draw starts out the game with the trait Cruel, minus 4 public water. Pretty bad if you want to keep your citizens happy. Uh, but this helps. And also, minus 25% corruption faction wide. Big benefit. So for Don't Draw with large factions, you're not really have to worry too much about it. In the middle tier, from 30 to 70, it's uh, minus 2 intimidation per turn. The decay slows down, but the benefit falls off quite a bit. Instead of 8 public order, you get 2 public order. That's a pretty big drop off, and minus 15 corruption. If you fall down to the last tier, you're still declaying, so you need to fight. You need to keep fighting as Don't Draw if you see your thing, if you see your intimidation drop down quite a bit. You get minus six public order plus 25 corruption. You never want to be in this area. If you're in this area, your game is pretty over because you're going to be having rebellions everywhere. Your corruption is going to eat away all your income, which is going to kill you. Um, so the big deal in this turn is we have to promote Liu Bu to our heir. Uh, you can't do that on turn one. I don't know why the game made it that way. But you can't do that on turn one. Uh, but we empty up the slot from Domin, and then we make Lu Bu our heir. And his salary instantly drops. Instantly, that frees up that 280 gold or 250 gold. I, I think it's 80 ish gold that he was uh, taking up in Grand Commandant, and now we have a much higher salary. Um, and he's marching towards getting us another land. And once he does, we're going to summon uh, Guo Si into his army to take his place. Guo Si will continue up to grab us our horse pasture and the animal tamer. And Lu Bu's job then will shift to defending the trade port. This is the choke point that defends our, uh, our empire from the rest of the map. If you look at our map, our strategy of how to play Dong Zhuo is to secure the northwest secure the west of Shu land and then uh, then at this point we have the option of either pushed out to the central plain and take our fight over here preferably north first right you want to fight along the border of the map so you don't have multiple fronts 
All right, if you push this way, you're going to push only one direction and then your, your border becomes the enemy over here. If you push this way, uh, your enemy becomes enemy over here. Basically, you never want to just take over Yuan Shu's land in the beginning because then you're surrounded on all sides. You have enemies everywhere. That's a terrible way to play. Uh, what we want to do is expand this way and the game is going to make it very easy on us because if you know Han Sui's personality makes him betray allies really quickly he's probably going to declare war on us first from all the people who haven't declared war on us yet but our first major military threat is going to come from the greedy Yuan Shu who's going to send his army this army right here to attack our trade port but don't worry see this narrow little pass of the trade port defense Lü Bu, the one-man army, is going to hold them back. And that's how we're going to play our game. So let's end turn, because uh, I think we started building stuff in every single slot. So let's continue. All right, so we're on turn three. Uh, we got ourselves another ancillary item. That reminds us, we actually have a few ancillary items we haven't given to people. So in this case, where it's authority points, we want to give it to Dong Zhuo, because the higher authority, higher satisfaction for your faction leader. This one, we can temporarily give it to whoever is most unhappy with us. That happens to be Li Ruo. So let's give it to him. Uh, both of these generals are great because both of these require one level up to get resourcefulness, which enables uh, flaming shots on tribuches. Um, we don't have any general show up. Usually that doesn't happen, but it doesn't really matter. We're pretty content with our roster right now. But just keep an eye on new recruits. Um, if you can get people with a burn trait, um, definitely prioritize that. Uh, here it costs 4,000 gold to get a county. We're going to definitely get it because it gives us food. Um, we can level it up a bit. Um, you can consider rushing some of these buildings if you really wanted to because uh, your economy is actually really, really strong in the game. So at this point, we're going to recruit Guo Si into his army, who is not really doing much. And we're going to recall Li Bu because we have other important things for him to do. Also gives him full movement point, if you remember this trick uh, from our past uh, guides. So he can continue to move. Uh, he can move towards the horse pasture. Saves us a few turns. Yeah, all these neat little exploits that we have been using uh, so here the goal is to level up these buildings the last building you want to do is the land development on the last turn uh, which is next turn uh, because this takes two turns normally so you're not really getting many benefits from uh, waiting it out um, if you can get it on the last turn you basically get a one free turn here um, in our other cities so continue building private workshop and this is when we demolishes so between these two buildings now the choice is demolish this one okay this one's much worse than this one so we can hold this one a little bit longer you get more food you get more income right this one gives you less income and also public water and it's already served its purpose because we already got both of these buildings built so demolish this right here and let's see all the building slots are taken our armies are all moving so we can just end turn all right, uh, turn three. Uh, we get some characters finally. Li Xiu. Okay, Li Xiu is a interesting character that we used in our Liu Bei campaign. Um, nothing too good. He's a good spy. Uh, he's willing to spy for us, and he also has a quiet trait. Uh, and we can spy because of our higher rank that we started out with. But I'm not interested in spending gold on spies. Yeah, it's not really a must, but it's just an option you can have. Um, these don't have the burn trait, which is really all I'm looking for. So we don't need these. We have plenty of generals on our own. This is the last turn of our economy grow, so we've got to take full advantage of this. Let's pop out our school building. Now we can destroy this building because we're going to be building the conscription building here. Because eventually we want to raise a big army here. Uh, Unding has so many options, but we said we want to grow food here this is our bread basket and Han Zhong let's build this up one more level and here we can't level it up because we need a reform and that's actually gonna be the reform we're gonna take um, we're gonna get ourselves an extra trade route 
and we're going to get ourselves a level 4 trade port upgrade. And that trade route, we're going to work our deal with the High Empire. Now obviously, right now we don't have a big army. We don't have an army at all, basically. So our military point is going to suck. Uh, we're going to make up for it with items, basically. And food, because now we actually have food. Hello, High Empire. Negative 2.5. So we can offer him food. One food should be at least 1 point, 1 point 1.1 here. And we can offer him this dog, which is 2 points. And sadly, we can't get this back because the High Empire has too much money. So even 50 gold to them, it's, they just hate us. We're not respected, right? The 3.6 respectability is because we have three, 36 points of treachery. So we observe, we usurp their throne basically. So I guess it makes sense. We'll give them 0.6 for free. All right, and this is pretty much all the trade route we're gonna have because you saw last time we don't have that many targets. Uh, but it's nice. It's another big boost to our economy. Over here, remember to switch them to normal stance before you move because you can't claim territory when you don't have normal stance. Pick up this uh, horse pasture. Very important building because reduces the cost of upkeeping and recruiting cavalry. And you have three horse pastures in the northwest quarter. You have Wei over here. You also have one in Jincheng held by Ma Teng. Uh, so these are all targets you want to eventually hold. Once you have all three of these, if you look at the tier 5, minus 20%. So these three combined, minus 60% makes your cavalry so much cheaper and we have such good vanguards we have to take full advantage of that and our next target is the animal tamer now this one gives you horses it's the only county that gives you horses in the game so we're going to go for that soon too um this is the last turn of our economy grows you could check if you really wanted to to see if you want to rush any of these buildings um I don't think, I mean, definitely don't rush the Luoyang Hanzhong one because you have nothing to build after that. Um, so I guess maybe we don't have to. I mean, here you basically save a turn. doesn't really do much. So let's just keep as it is. And uh, our army has moved. And we can summon Lu Bu here if we want ahead of time. But his job is basically... Hold this choke for us. That's that's his only job. He's all we need to hold out against all the armies out east. And over here, eventually, once we have our military building, we're going to be raising an army with Dong Zhuo himself to conquer this northwest. Uh, let's continue. All right, people are starting to fight each other. Good for them. Another fun thing about Dong Zhuo is you get to watch the world burn during the end turn phase because you see the whole map. Uh, you get a trader. This is pretty good on your faction leader. 5% trade influence should boost our income a little bit, even a little higher. Now we can build the, the conscription building. We actually want to level this one up first, even though it doesn't impact our economy. Um, the public water is nice, and we need to get the starting rank higher. Uh, we've got to get it to tier 3. Um, you get also minus 5% redeployment cost which is kind of good because Dong Zhuo's army is quite pricey in the beginning of the game if you don't have any redeployment cost bonuses so we're gonna aim for that um, and then elsewhere we can level the horse pasture up one more time it got a lot more expensive because we lost the bonuses from your economy grows but that's fine we can afford it matter of fact even as we expand territories we're going to build up a very nice bankroll to use for our first army. Um, and that's it. We build everything. And if you look at the map, um, it's interesting that Yuan Shu has not come up yet. Usually he comes up already, but it doesn't matter. Lui Bu is enough to handle whoever decides to come. So let's continue. All right. More war going on. And Yuan Shu's army has peaked out. He actually recruited quite a large army this time. I'm impressed. Usually, usually he takes whoever he starts out with, right? The roster we saw earlier, he marks that army up. This is actually quite a sizable army. Um, 
we have to fight a different way. I'll describe how we fight this once we get there. But right now, we can just peacefully focus on building ourselves up to make ourselves stronger. So the goal of this commandery is just more food. Um, let's build up the this one more time. I think this can only be built up one more time. And then we just build this farmland up. Um, here, we're trying to get a nice army going. So we continue to build that. His last job is to get us the animal tamer. Alright, and once this is built, we can build something here. Uh, we could rush this. Uh, we can wait. And his job is done, basically, at this point. Uh, you don't really want this commandery. It's nice. I'm not saying it's bad. Uh, I'm just saying that you don't need to spend 8,000 gold right now. You might want to save it for your first army. Um, so that's all I'm saying. Uh, get that. De we're definitely going to get that later. But right now, the purpose of this commandery as a whole is to give us discounts on future recruits on horses and to produce actual horses for our army. So let's continue. All right. Master Archer. Well, this event doesn't happen until much later in history. This is the event that Liu Bu does between uh, Liu Bei and Cao Cao's forces to get them to stop fighting. Uh, but anyways, we'll take the extra experience. We got another stone archer. Uh, it can be used to make people happy, but we don't need that right now. People are pretty content with us. Uh, 29 is not that high, but yeah. So we'll get him reach. Our wife doesn't really matter. I guess we'll get him dignity. And who else leveled up? What's leveled up? He's our commandery administrator, so we should work on these two commandery abilities, including plus five more food. So we'll go wisdom and then abundance. And um, if we take a look, Yuan Shu's army fought the Han army over here, wiped out Xu Huang's army basically, and he changed his army mix again. I don't like all these spear guards, these are going to be a problem. Um, but we'll deal with it when the time come. Right now, we continue our build up. Get the animal tamer to level one first. Even level one can produce you legendary mounts. There's a small chance, but there's a chance. So get this to level one first, and then continue to build this up to level three. That this is the highest you can do without getting reforms. And then you can get these after you get the reforms. Over here, food production. And that's it. All right, we get an event. Uh, this is a historical event where, well, it's not historical. It's in the novel, Romance with Three Kingdom, where Dong Zhuo has a feast where he, the entertainment is him torturing people. But we are a nice version of Dong Zhuo. We're going to play him as a wise tyrant who will rule all of China. So we're not going to flog them, we're not going to torture them, but we're also not going to release them. We're just going to ignore them, because all the, the other options gives you very bad penalties. Uh, let's see, any interesting characters? Sun Shao. Uh, he has Modest, which is always nice. He's weak. Stuart. Okay, so we could technically grab him for assignment purposes. Um, we do need a Sentinel. So, he's also willing to spy, so he's definitely not a spy. So let's grab him. And uh, we have to pay attention to Yuan Shu. He's our first enemy. So he took Lumberyard. He's going to come straight for the trade port now. Given this army composition, it might make the fight a little bit difficult. Hmm. It's a little different from... The few times I tested, but I, I know I can still beat them back. Um, that's not the concern. The concern is how do we want to beat them back? So this is done. Um, this building's finished. Now we have to build this in the right order. <laughs> I believe it's one level up of private workshop, then in building twice, and then private workshop and state workshops at the end. I'm not sure if I remember that correctly from our. Uh, commerce and industry guide. Let's see. Level up on Zhang Liao for being administrator. So Zhang Liao has a very interesting skill. 
He has the Resolve of the Righteous. It's a unique skill for him. Uh, if the enemy is stronger, Zhang Lao gets a uh, boost to the... Not a boost. He gets a boost himself, yes, for 25% melee invasion, 33% melee attack rate, and causes fear. Uh, it's pretty strong. Uh, makes him very effective as like a one-man army alongside Lü Bu. Um, so we kind of want to give him that, but I kind of want to work him from this angle down because I don't really need this one. This one only gives plus five melee evasion. Not a big deal. Knight battle is very huge here because our um, strategists are very far away from that. So that's why it's better to give John L that. We're probably going to use uh, Li Ru first. He's almost leveled up. He's three turns away. So we're going to keep him in the city a little bit longer. Uh, what we can do ahead of time is to raise the army of Dong Zhuo. Yeah, let's raise the army. And Zhang Liao. And we can get rid of Dong Zhuo's very expensive cavalry that we don't really need in the beginning of the game. It's more of a luxury item in the late game once we have all the horse pastures. Um, so we're not, we could recruit an army here right now, but we don't need to because we don't need to use them uh, at this point. Um, with this army approaching, we could go help out. It's always an option. It's not very far, um, but we'll debate that when the time comes. Let's continue. All right, and during this nice winter end of turn, Han Sui has betrayed us. But not to worry, his goal is not really to attack us. He's going to be attacking a lot of the Han Empire territories near us. So let's just acknowledge that. All right, Han Sui declare war on us and declare war on the Han Empire. Ma Teng doesn't join him. That's a key here, but he will eventually. Uh, we triggered our recruitment uh, bonus, so we're going to start recruiting our army now. And uh, our next task is assignments, which gives intimidation. That's going to be automatically triggered. And we get to choose who we want to build our relationship with. Um, actually, Jia Xu is a good choice right here because Dong Zhuo doesn't get along with Jia Xu in terms of their traits. So picking this will help out. So because of that mission, which is not always going to trigger, it's random. We're going to actually throw Jashu into the army instead of Li Ru. It's going to make our tribuches a bit weaker in the beginning, but that's totally fine. Um, so because we have the re replenishment bonus, we're going to just pump out a full army right away. Uh, we're going to do very good units because we can A, afford them, and B, we're going to be fighting some hard fights. So. This is a pretty nice beginning army, right? For uh, archer militias, a little weak, but tribuches, archer militias. Uh, these guys, you could, if you wanted to, you could technically delete them and recruit new ones that are level four because we have the, the uh, conscription building, but it's fine. Level one's not gonna be the end of the world. Saves you like, I don't know, 200 gold. Uh, I guess now that I said it that way, we should just not save 200 gold and recruit these. All right, and uh, over here we have Militia uh, Lance Cavalry. Over here we have the very nice units. We have the Jian uh, Guards, which is quite nice. This army is gonna be tasked with taking care of Han Sui. So if you look at the map, Han Sui has these two territories right here. Uh, his main army is over here, and his route is actually gonna be, he's gonna take over this horse pasture and the farmland and then he'll come attack us. So quite a long time away from attacking us. Um, we don't have to worry about him much for now. Um, and over here, it's going to get a little interesting. This is always different every time I've tested this. Sometime Gondu wins and takes over these land, and you can just start attacking him right away. And sometime Ma Teng wins and destroy Gondu, then we don't have to worry about this area for a bit. Uh, so in this case where Ma Teng is doing well, and in the case that Yuan Shu has a large army coming, we might have to help eastward. Um, usually not the case. Uh, this is quite a difficult land. Even on March, he can't get to us in uh, one turn. So we can wait out a little bit. 
Um, I tend to not want to get sieged, so I might just strike out at him before he get to us. So let's say he goes to here, right? What the strategy is with Lü Bu over here is to not wait in this trade port. Even though the trade port has excellent, excellent defense. They're not fully replenish it, but they will uh, in two turns or four turns for these. Um, you have two full retinues in a very defensible map against any army. You can hold that with Lü Bu's help for sure. Um, but Lü Bu has multiple lives because of resiliency. So what you want to do with Lü Bu actually is to fight a suicidal fight with the enemy. When I say suicidal, I don't mean kill yourself, but I mean run around the map, pick off range units, and just use your abilities, kill as many as you can through the 40 minutes. Lü Bu will never lose because his weapons give unbreakable. So you'll never rout, even if you're outnumbered. You can just run around the map forever, and your horse is the best horse in the game. Top speed. So you have like 96 speed on the map. You also have mobility as your skill, so you have extra speed. No one can catch you. So you can kite forever, you can do as much damage forever for free. So that's why you go out, do one attack. Let's say even if you mess up in the fight and get killed, it's okay. You have resiliency. Very next turn, just resummon him in the trade port. And then you still have him to help you fight the next fight, along with all the garrisons and the defense on the map. So that's how you hold back armies over here. And your resiliency will come back. And Dong Zhuo's job is really not to help, it's really just to take over all of this over here in the map, right? Once you secure all this area, uh, you become super wealthy because you have three silk, three horse pastures, and um, basically no enemies for a while because you're just going to be choked out here in this little land right here. And over here, you can decide what to do depending on who wins between Zheng Jiang and Zhang Yan. Because, you know, the rest of the map's going to be busy fighting each other as well. So let's pick up our reform. So here's where things get a little bit flexible. Uh, for better development economically, you definitely want to go down this route, right? You want to go for the normal onyx dragon uh, rush it makes a lot of sense because onyx dragon rush is also the silk and spice rush basically so by going this way it's going to benefit your all your uh, silk traders in this area and you get all your uh, industry and commerce building set up so you can definitely pick this one up first alternatively if you want to focus on a lot of fighting if you want to push out multiple armies in the beginning you might want to consider going down uh, the route over here to go for the barbed mounts, which gives you the level 5 um, horse pasture upgrade. This enables you, once you get all three of them, to get 60% discounts and you get extra rank up. You get extra discounts for cavalry. You can push out some really strong all cavalry armies that are just going to wreck the enemy. And this is only going to take you five reform. So my recommendation is actually go for this first. It's going to help your economy, it's going to help your army with Onyx Dragons and multiple trade routes, and then you can go for this later. So, that's my recommendation. Pick up this. And because Hansui declared war on us, we should have a freed up trade agreement. And right now, it's just basically whoever you can get the deal with. Um, you can give him food. Ma Teng is a good person to do a deal with because he didn't join um, Hansui against you. So perhaps you can keep him on your side a bit longer. Uh, you have these items that you really don't have much of a use for. You have two axes now, so let's give it to him. Let's see if he's willing to pay us. Nope. Um, so we're going to just end up giving him this for free, I guess. Or we can maybe pay him gold. kind of don't want to give him that many points for free. Yeah, this is good. This is a good deal. Alright. So, the Simon one came through, get Intimidation Point. Our next one is to hold, basically, hold 8 settlements. We already hold 9, so we get more Intimidation Points. Uh, this slows the Decay down a little bit, but we already passed the, the top tier. Uh, now we have to get Grandmaster. This is Prestige Points. Um, as you can see, we're already dropped below 70. We're at 65. So we lost most of our public order bonuses. 
Um, over here, we're still fine because we have a huge army. We also have the conscription building. But if you look at Undine, we're already kind of suffering from that. Uh, people in power, the four points of cruelty from Dong Zhuo kind of hurts us. Um, but we can get this back up after one fight. Once he comes over here to feed us, we'll be fine. Um, now we have the option to build stuff. Um, we can level this up to a small city now that we have some food. And get an extra building slot. And we can upgrade this one more time after that. Because it requires a small city to get it much higher level. So let's build that. Take some time. Over here, I think it's the M building now. I don't remember the exact order of the most efficient route, but it really doesn't hurt you. It's just these three buildings, uh, private workshop and N first, state workshop second. Over here, uh, we, as you can see our money situation, we really didn't have the luxury to take this. Um, Guosa doesn't really need to stay on the map anymore. We can play recall him. I mean, if we had the extra money, we can wait a little bit because he's administrator, right? Before we recall him, we can dump him a full rack of these uh, spear guards and then recall him. And then he'll have these as part of his defensive units. Just a little thought. I guess we'll just leave him out right now because we still are using most of our gold to build. So next turn. All right. Han Empire, you see, uh, request our aid. Uh, we have to help them, basically. Uh, Ma Teng's fighting them, so uh, we're going to be fighting Ma Teng now. All right, Zhang Yan declares war on Liu Yu. Okay, so we are at war with Ma Teng as well. Uh, we got tribute from a random event. A lot of characters. Chen Gong, that uh, domain's coming back. Uh, Huan Lin, he is a farmer. If I yep, he is a farmer. He's quite useful uh, because he's a farmer. We might recruit him. So now we're at war with Ma Teng. So in this game that we're playing through, Gongdu doesn't have the upper hand. So now we can swing our army west to attack them. Over here, uh, Zheng Jiang has shown up on the map and she's going to be attacking our settlements. Um, we can loop them around a little bit. I think mm, Horse Pasture, I don't think there's a... Um, I'm not sure if there's actually a defensive structure in Horse Pastures. But regardless, if you lose it, it's not the end of the world for us. You know, to lose this, we can get it back. Um, our goal right now is to take out Ma Teng and Han Sui. And as we said, Han Sui is not really going to be busy attacking us. We don't even see his army. And we left these two Han settlements here for them to attack. So if we lose these, it's okay. Right? The purpose of this was to reduce our cost to recruit. Uh, obviously, the upkeep is a big deal, but the recruitment cost is the big cash upfront. Uh, we can get him back just to recall him to safety. Let's recruit him that army that we promised him. Alright, so now Anding gets a much bigger defensive force once he gets here. Right now he's not here. It's a one turn cooldown. But then once he's here, it's much better. So we're going to end our episode with this fight. I want to show you guys what I meant by how strong Liu Bu can hold this fort. Um, so we're going to fight this one. Um, and then we're going to send Dong Zhuo's army out west. Um, he's one turn away with mustering, but probably two turns without mustering, which is perfect. So he'd be fine. Yep, two turns without mustering. So he'd be perfect once we get to the edge. And then we're going to be fighting Ma Turn's main army. Uh, our route is to crush the army, go north, right? Silk Trader, Horse Pasture, find his main army, right? We don't want his army sneaking around behind us. We want to crush the army. And then once we take care of Ma Teng and Han Sui, we can turn our attention to whoever is bothering us over here. And then we can hold this choke for a little bit longer. Gongdu is kind of annoying. If he's weak, we can crush him. Zhang Lu is pretty content, usually won't mess with us. And uh, these two factions don't like us, but as you can see, they're not at war with us. So just clean up the factions that are at war with us. Uh, unite this northwest corner. Uh, this army is undefeatable. Dong Zhuo is super strong. This uh, Blade of Xiang Yu, very, very strong weapon. And uh, he has his own armor as well. Zhang Lao, excellent general, excellent duelist once you get um, a few of the, the traits. So this army is pretty set. Now we're just going to fight this and we can end our guides. Super long guide. Sorry about it, but Dong Zhuo is a very, very special case. So I think he deserves the attention. Let's fight Yuan Shu's army on the field. <laughs> Alright, obviously AI is not going to think we can win. 
a uh, few things to note. Our goal is not to win the fight. Our goal is to do as much damage as possible. If we get killed, which is a possibility, it's not the end of the world because we have resiliency. So let's jump in here and I'll show you guys how we do the fight. All right, we loaded up in here. Um, we only have one general, no troops, so all range units gonna open fire us right away, including this trebuchet. So we're gonna have to evasive maneuver in the beginning to not get hit by rocks. Archers, we can't help ourselves. One thing to note, this strategist right here has, um, if you see the ability icon right there, that's the one that locks your ability usage. So if we're within range of him, we can't use our very, very, very strong uh, splash damage Rager Lu Bull. So be careful. When we're close, just pull a little distance away from him. Let the units chase you. Use the ability to kill them. Um, let's just jump start here. We got to close distance first. Uh, preferably stay in the wooded area. Um, it says you're invisible here, right? But because you're the only unit on the map, the AI still know where you are. Just very BS. Uh, because they're on defense, we're attacking them. They're not going to swarm up to chase us. Uh, they, they feel like they can just wait out the timer and win the fight, which, which is true. But um, we don't care about that at this point. We're basically going to fight till we win or till we die. And both are very acceptable. Um, I think the best way to go through this forest, route behind and get a jump on the trebuchet at that point. Uh, we can walk here too. We can first get the command down and then tell him to just chill and not run. Saves a little bit of energy, extra charge damage. No one's going to want to duel you in the beginning. You see, they're already cheating. They know we're here, even though they can't see us. Oh, they can see us now a little bit. Alright, not completely cheating, but pretty much cheating. Right, I guess we have to run now. This is not thick enough to hide us. Is this the case? Uh, the, with the new patch changes, do not, do not charge a spear unit. If you even see spear units close to you, if you if you think they are braced and facing you, then just don't charge. The risk is so high. If you lose your mount, you're dead. You're, you're just instant dead as a general. Do not lose your horse. So whatever you do, use your speed loop around see so if you see them just loop around take take the long way don't run into them they're not our target in this fight you know how do we fight these guys let them come to you that's how you fight against spear units now i'm so worried there might be a spear unit here i'm going to take the long route and then we're going to charge the tribuches that's why we came here we came here to kill the tribuches now once we get here, use our ability right away before that guy gets close. Alright, then we can just run out, they're gonna chase us. The cavalry and uh, Yuan Shu, the general, will chase us. And then once we let them chase a little bit, right, these are fast units. The spear guys are slow, just run back in, charge at him, look at his health. Oh, we missed on the charge. Come on, Lubu. There we go. 3,000 damage per whack. Alright, now we need them to chase us a little bit. Ooh, the flaming shots on the trebuchet. What an impressive... Okay, so... Let's see. We probably want to loop this way. We're getting showered, but we're not taking... We're not going to take too much damage from archers. Not really a big deal. Don't get hit by rocks, though. Alright, the infantry are going to be way too slow to catch us. All right, and if we don't select a target, the infantry don't know how to respond properly. Don't charge until you know who you're charging the last moment. That's until you know you cleared around them. Alright, now we charge. And they don't have time to respond. Or else they would know. And they'll just respond right away. And we're wasting our abilities on tribuches, but it's worth it. Alright, now we pull forward, because we don't have the cooldown ability. We can do this on fast mode. Yuan Shu comes out, we whack him a few times. He's really no match for us. Like, if you think about it, Yuan Shu versus Liu Bu.
Now, once the infantry get get close, we get out. Oh, uh, he's dead. It's just that simple. They get enraged, but we we can we can run out. We can outrun them. Don't worry about archers. Not a big deal. We need the cooldown, the splash damage to kill these cavalry. We don't want to engage on them. They're slower than us because we have the red air. Alright. Now it's more looping around until we find an opening. So technically, if you play this right, you can crush this whole army with Li Wu. Okay, all right. Two groups, cavalry grouped together. Ability smash. Ah, too bad they're not close, not grouped. All right, that's clear. Got to loop around, big circle, get rid of all these spear units. Honestly, this is the biggest army Yuanshu has sent at me so far in all my test runs. Usually, it's just the army they start out with. And that army is really not impressive. No spear units at all. So this is actually the strongest one I've seen so far. Trickiest one to play. Since we have a good horse, we can afford to chase down people. Even if we get tired, their unit's gonna get more tired. We should have chased down those seven guys. Uh, now they're gonna get out of the map. Mm, that's not good. That means they can still fight at the next fight. Yeah, we want to get rid of all these guys. Right? Whatever we kill makes our next fight at the trade port much simpler. Now, where's that group? It's somewhere here. Yep. We don't want to get engaged by the infantry. Alright. We'll waste some time to kill that one guy. We have all the time in the world. There's no timer on us because we're not defending. It's basically till we're dead or they're dead. It's that simple. You might think, okay, we have so little health, we're probably gonna lose this. It's okay, like I said, if we die, we die. Not a big deal for Liu Bu, we have resiliency. Our goal is to how much we can kill before we die. All right. That strategist always hides in the back. So we had to cleverly maneuver ourselves to get to him. Because he can't duel us, he really serves no purpose except for to lock our ability usage. So if we can somehow... Mm, we can't bait him out. Alright, let them come to us, let them come to us. Alright, they're pretty spread out. Alright, this is a test of patience between you and the AI. There we go. Ah, The units got to me before he, he got into the units before we could do anything to him. Uh, I don't want to waste my ability on just one cavalry. They're so scattered. Alright, there we go. Bash the ground. Lost a lot of health for that. Alright, now we chase them. Make sure they don't come back and fight us. Hate cavalries. They're like general killers. You can't do this with most generals. First, you need to be unbreakable. Second, you need to have a really fast horse. And a splash damage ability. Libu has all those factors. I want to kill that general. These forests are really preventing me from maneuvering the way I want to. Because the second I run into the forest, I'm afraid to run into like a hidden spear unit and then they're just going to end my game. Well, not end, end this battle basically. Mm, that guy's always in the back. That usually means like, we got we got a slash on him last time. He only has 4,000 health left. So that strategy works. We just have to find an opening. Alright, 
they're so spread out. There gotta be an opening for us. Wow, this just big avenue open. There we go. Perfect. Killed him. Perfect. See? Not that hard. Just gotta have some patience. Alright, let's whack this cavalry units. Perfect. Now our main threats are all gone. Right? Everything that can really threaten us directly are all gone. This guy, I actually want to duel him. But first I need to whack him a few times to get him weaker. Get a charge. Alright, he has a he has an armor armor ability. Splash. Get out. He's killing us. He's angry because we killed Yuan Shu. So we're about to die, and that's fine. Um, if they brought less men, we would have done more. But before we die, obviously we want to try to get this off one more time. In preferably with all the range units. Once again, we have to patiently look for an opening. Get them to come after us. On this way. Mm, those crossbowmen are hiding really well. Because they ran out of ammo, they're not going to sit in the back and shoot at us. Which makes it harder to charge on them. Ooh, free whack. There we go. Each whack is like 3,000. We can technically kill him. We just got to find more openings like that. Patience. Free whack. Right, another 3,000 health done. Wow, I really want to use the ability within them. That would be so much damage. Ooh, I don't want to get tangled with him. He whacked us, he whacked us. Alright, he's losing more up. We got him. Alright, we just gotta loop around before we can get to him. It'd be better if he wanted to duel us at this state because then we can uh, heal off the duel. But this is a good result too. Killing the generals make them difficult. Yuan Shu would have to have other generals ready to take over the retinues or else the retinues would disband. Alright, so now we have these really low morale archers in the back. We're gonna use our last bit of health. Right, they're just scared of Li Bu when he's close by. Mm. These spear guy, these spear units are really annoying me. With 500 health, we can't just recklessly charge at spear units. They just kill us. I just want to maximize damage one more time. Let me do it. Let me let me make my death worthwhile. Ah, uh, he died before he pulled off the ability. All right, so we lost. That's fine. All right, so we lost that fight. We lost intimidation for losing a fight. That's rough. Uh, we get extra experience for losing a fight. Uh, first time we lose a fight. And if you look at their army, this guy's wiped. This guy's wiped. He needs one turn to recover. Uh, two turn to recover for many of their units. We should have chased down those seven tribuchet guys. That's that's the worst situation here. That's one mistake we made. But that army that's left, there's there's no way that army can beat us with a defense structure of army here. And within one more turn, Lu Bu is gonna come back full health and we just pop him here um, as we want. So that's gonna be the end of our guide actually. Um, I think this guide's the longest one I've done. Uh, pretty comprehensive uh, about what happens with Dong Zhuo. Uh, one thing to note, in a few turns, two turns I believe, at turn 12, you get the mission where uh, Del Chan gets to join your faction. Uh, many players think um, following the story and recruiting Del Chan would mean the death of Dong Zhuo. It doesn't. You can totally recruit Del Chan. Just when the second event mission comes up, where you and Lu Bu are fighting for Del Chan, make sure just give Del Chan over to Lu Bu, right? You marry her off to Lu Bu, everyone's happy, Dong Zhuo won't lose his head, you have a happy Lu Bu with a happy Del Chan, and everything will be fine. Um, the goal going forward in this guide as you play through is to march Dong Zhuo over, uh, destroy whoever is over here. Your three enemies are Gongdu, Ma Teng, and Han Sui. And then you want to sweep up northwest, 
control all these land, continue to build up as you hold on to the trade port. Uh, it's a pretty extreme way to hold on to the trade port by using Lü Bu by himself. Uh, you can obviously modify this game plan to uh, your liking. You can have him have an actual army here, right? Imagine Lü Bu just himself with a retinue plus the full rack over here. You can definitely hold back most armies without an issue just by staying in the trade port. Or you can use my strategy and be a little bit more pushing the edge, I guess, uh, where you are trying to actively fight um, the forces. Uh, in many of my test runs, the army that he sent is usually like a 900-800 man army, the one he starts out with with three generals, uh, same three generals, and I can wipe that out with Lubu by himself. Uh, in this case, too many spear guards, so a little bit rough, but still doable. Um, you know, if we played a little bit more patiently, uh, we definitely could have wiped this one out, and we definitely could have did a little bit more damage to the range units. But even with the units that's left, it's not really a big threat to our city. Uh, because the strategist died, all the bonus cunning stats, all the bonus flaming shots are gone, so these are not really going to be a big issue uh, in the incoming attack. So remember, as Dong Zhuo, you want to start out by controlling the northwest, then you're flexible going north to take the other horse pasture. Or go down south, take up the armor smith, weapon smith over here. Eventually, you can even consider taking down the south here, uh, everything south of the Pearl River here, and you can gain control of silk and spice, and your economy is gonna go off the charts. Because um, if you come down here, Sun, Sun Jian is not gonna have full control of this in time. So, you're gonna have most of this land as well, pretty safe with some border Han Empire, and then you can push down south and then close in on the rest of the map or you can go take the north area out uh, because you're playing as a tyrant like the governors you're going to have to hunt down all three emperor seat so you pretty much have to fight all over the map anyways so just stick to the edge of the map expand whichever way to your liking uh, recruit generals smartly using our trait and background guides and you should be all set playing the crew tyrant don't draw and thank you guys for watching uh, please uh, leave a like and comment below if you enjoy the video and see you next time. Bye!